Coming up, concerns continue to mount surrounding the coronavirus. Also, schools shut down throughout the country. And tonight, we will hear the church's perspective on the pandemic. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Watching the Bahamas tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, all. I'm Shashina Rolf Arkison. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Dropping News the Bahamas is coming to terms with a new reality now that the country has confirmed its first case of COVID 19. Acting Minister of Health, the Honorable Jeffrey Lloyd, notifying the public on this development during a press conference yesterday afternoon in New Providence. According to the minister, the patient, a 61 year old female resident of New Providence, does not have a relevant travel history. She's not known to have traveled outside of the country in the past 20 days, but she presented with symptoms of fever and cough. Now at this time, the patient's exposure is unknown. The patient and family members have been informed of this diagnosis. She is receiving care in the designated isolation area of the Princess Margaret Hospital. We are currently investigating her family and social contacts to determine whether they could have been the source of her infection. Now this outbreak comes amid the annual flu season. Consultant, physician of infectious diseases at the Princess Margaret Hospital, Dr. Nakia Forbes says that if you are experiencing flu-like symptoms, which is common because this is the flu season, please do not flood the local hospitals, clinics, or doctor's offices. There is influenza and colds, but there is also the circulating virus that is easily spread within close contact. If you have flu-like symptoms, stay at home. Do not go to work. Self-isolate yourself. Find a room in your home away from your family that you can rest and take symptomatic relief. Fluids, fever reducers, cough reducers. If you are worsening and think that you need medical attention, Please call ahead to your doctor's office and speak to them via the telephone or call the COVID hotline. Doctors, please put a mask on the patient. See them in an isolation room and close the door. Use telemedicine as much as possible. Make yourselves having the opportunity to speak with us through the surveillance unit and through the COVID hotline to get further guidance on how the patient should be managed and or tested. Should that patient need to have supportive care? Remember that 80% of persons will have mild infections, mild illness. Those that have moderate problems like shortness of breath or need more respiratory support, we would want to know before the person presents to the health facility so we can put them in the designated isolation unit and that they can be masked with appropriate uh, personal protective equipment and masks so that it can minimize spread in the healthcare setting and for our bigger community. Meantime, the nation's leader addressing the country last night assuring Bahamians that the well-being of all citizens and residents are of paramount importance. He explains the next step in the country's national response plan. Italia Hall has that story. The nation's leader, the most honorable Dr. No Hubert Minnis, says the health, safety, and well-being of Bahamians is his greatest priority. He says the government has been monitoring the coronavirus crisis on a daily basis. An emergency cabinet meeting was held on Sunday, March 15th, to coordinate the next steps in the country's national response. Given the growing public health concern and to protect the health and well-being of the population of the Bahamas, effective Thursday, March 19th, several travel restrictions will be introduced. Foreign nationals and foreign individuals who have traveled within the last 20 days from the United Kingdom, Ireland and Europe will be prohibited entry into the Bahamas. This is in addition to restrictions already in place for China, Iran, Italy and South Korea. 
All Bahamian nationals and residents returning to the Bahamas through any port of entry from any of the restricted countries or an area where community infection and spread is present will be quarantined or be placed under self-isolation. The Prime Minister says non-essential travel by Bahamians is highly discouraged at this time. Let me remind you of some health and medical facts about this virus. Common signs of infection include respiratory symptoms, fever, cough, shortness of breath, and breathing difficulties. In most of their cases, infection can cause pneumonia, severe acute respiratory syndrome, kidney failure, and even death. He says training has been conducted for health care providers on proper screening, the use of protective equipment, and COVID-19 protocols. All national sporting events will be postponed until further notice, and there is an indefinite suspension of all permits for the use of public spaces. Now, during the address, the Prime Minister admitted that the coronavirus crisis represents yet another risk to the country's economy, finances, and fiscal sustainability plan. This crisis will have a growing adverse impact on confidence, on travel, and supply chains across the globe. This will affect Bahamian workers and businesses, and will have an impact on the poor and more vulnerable in our country. I will be meeting and consulting with major business entities to get their input on our national response. No sector is more at risk than travel. Prime Minister Minna says he understands that a lot of persons may be worried, but he says out of control fare will not help this crisis. There will be adequate food at the food stores. There is no need for panic buying. We are also going to enhance national security measures in order to maintain necessary law and order. There is a large amount of fake news being created by people who want to scare you. Ignore them and stay informed via certified organizations and trusted and responsible news sources. The nation's leader concluded his address by stating that citizens must do their part to keep their families and communities safe. If you are sick, stay at home, wash your hands regularly, and stay away from large crowds and gatherings. Italia Hall, ZNS Network News. Well, during his address to the nation last night, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis went to great lengths to appeal for a united approach in the fight against the coronavirus or COVID-19 pandemic, noting that the country must be unified during the crisis, stating that this is not a time for partisanship. He says he has consulted with the leader of the opposition and pledges to keep him informed of the government's response to the coronavirus. I hope that if he has ideas, he would share them with me so they can be presented in our policy discussions. This is not a time for partisanship. We must work to save lives. We must work to keep our people healthy. We must work to preserve our economy. Bahamians do not want to see their leaders attacking each other in crisis. It is my hope that the leader of the opposition and his party will work with us in a spirit of cooperation. Now, Ivan Butler also spoke with us earlier about the closure of schools. 
Most of the public school campuses were empty on Monday morning following the announcement by the nation's leader that all schools will be closed across the country until after the Easter break. A special meeting was called at the Ministry of Education's office at the C.A. Smith Government Complex for principals and teachers from the various schools. Superintendent of Education Ivan Butler says they simply want to reinforce the message passed on by the Minister of Education, the Honorable Jeff Lloyd. In terms of how our teachers would be proactive in reaching those students as it relates to BJC, BGCSE coursework, due dates and deadlines. And we also wanted to show um, our administrators that they um, would enforce the protocols as outlined by the Ministry of Health in terms of making our schools um, safe during this period. Now the education system on the islands of Grand Bahama and Abaco were greatly affected by Hurricane Dorian in September, causing students to be out of school for several months. Butler admits that this crisis is yet another disappointment for the education system as students will be out of school once again. And that we have to be out of school again and we are now in the examination period where our students are preparing for GLAD, BJC and BGCSE examinations. So this is also a blow. But again, we understand the severity of this coronavirus and we are taking every precaution to make sure that our students, staff, they are all safe. So safety is a priority for us as well. But he says plans are in place to keep students up to date with their respective curriculums. Our teachers, our schools are proactive. Uh, we are reaching out to our students via um, emails or or WhatsApp or social media. So we are our teachers, many of our schools are in constant contact with our students. And so we're doing the best under the circumstances of trying to keep our students updated uh, as much as possible. And so we'll just continue to give out that information to our students and to parents. And we want parents to also be a part of this program in terms of making sure that their students um, do some work during their time. And if they need information on what should be done, they can contact our schools. The administrators are in schools, so we can provide um, whatever necessary work for students during this period. Now, all schools will remain closed until Tuesday, April 14th. The Minister of Education is expected to provide an update on Wednesday in the House of Assembly. Italia Hall, ZNS Network News. Now, our news team also had an opportunity to speak with the school leaders on Grand Bahama following that meeting. These principals say that it is an unfortunate situation, but they are doing all that they can to prepare. The last six weeks, I'm after Dorian, and now to lose another four weeks, um, I think it's devastating on the education of our students. Um, but you know with technology now, um, there are ways that our teachers can reach our students. We've just come out of Dorian, and therefore we already had some processes and strategies that we were using for to ensure that students would be able to survive with the instructional program. And so we already have teachers and departments who are using um, the internet to reach out to their students, school geology and other resources that they get, um, send their work to them and they give feedback. As a high school and being very concerned with student performance at BGCSE national exams, we want to be able to continue getting uh, assignments and instructions out to students, particularly to meet a um, coursework deadline. So uh, we run a, a number of programs at school. So. What, what exists now is that a lot of the uh, programs, they've set up online communication with their students. Well, principal of Freeport Primary School, Gia Walker, says safety is her main concern at this time that um, this is coming at this time because we want to keep our children safe first and foremost and then our staff members. Uh, but it's a daily task that we have to work on as information comes to us then we have to make sure and get that information to our staff and students. So it's, it's, it's going to take a while so we're going to do what we can to make sure that everybody gets the information that they need and that learning can still take place even though our children are going to be at home. Well, as the world continues to spread, to monitor rather, the spread of COVID-19, residents in the Western District attended an informational meeting this past Saturday hosted by the local government council along with the area member of parliament. Our Megan Shepherd reports. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. 
the local government council, along with the member of parliament for West Grand Bahama and Bimini, Pakisha Parker Edgecombe, hosting the second of what is expected to be a series of town meetings in the Eight Mile Rock community. Edgecombe telling residents that in light of current global events surrounding COVID-19, leaders found it necessary to keep the public informed on what is happening in the country and here on Grand Bahama. A lot of people are starting to go into somewhat of a panic mode because normally this occurs when you don't really know. And this is why we're giving you this information here today so that you are aware. There's no doubt that you are going to have concerns about your health and your well-being and that of your family and your loved ones. But we're saying here today that we need you in West Grand Bahama particularly to be informed and made aware of what is factual. She also cautioned residents to be cautious of the information they spread via social media and to only trust information from reliable sources. At a time like this, uh, fake news seems to be rampant and it causes people to go in a panic mode. And we're coming here to you this afternoon to say to you that you are to not trust anything unless it is from an official source. You are to trust nothing that is going to have you go into some type of hysteria and start spreading information that is false. You know, calm heads will prevail in all of this. Now, residents also presented several questions and concerns, including whether or not test kits were available on island. How will residents obtain supplies as the world continues to stockpile? And what steps to take if persons present COVID-19 symptoms? Megan Shepard, CNS Network News. Well, over on the island of Bimini, officials are keeping a close eye on developments surrounding COVID-19. Administrator Cleola Pender says that Northern Ireland is in a state of readiness. Uh, our protocol of preparedness for the coronavirus on February 3rd, uh, where we met with um, immigration, customs, uh, the nurse, doctor, and the chief counselor, as well as the superintendent of police. And so we prepared our own protocol because Albemany is in close proximity to the U.S. And we have a number of carriers that come here. We have the um, Tropic Ocean Seaplane. We have Valeria. Um, we have MSC on Ocean Key. We have Khaki, so we're very open. And we have quite a bit of marinas. So we started our preparation um, very early. Um, we also had a town meeting on February 20th to advise the public. It wasn't really well attended. Um, I don't feel the person, um, I guess, took it serious at the time. But um, in any event, we still had the town meeting. And then we met with all of the dock masters, um, just um, letting them know what the protocol was for Bimini. So we actually established a questionnaire, which is similar to what um, the Bahamas government put out there. And... Um, so we established a, 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 actually a protocol for the island itself. Okay, so what happens if someone presents uh, with symptoms or someone may have recently traveled to an affected area? Okay, so let's say, for example, the dog master. Um, a boat comes in. We had about 14 uh, pleasure crafts that came in last year. And so if a boat comes into the dock, the current protocol is that the captain would, would get off the boat and take all of the documents. So we've actually changed that now. The dog master is the one that actually distributes the um, immigration um, form. So what we've done, um, in our, but our questionnaire, they would they would produce the, uh, provide the captain with the immigration forms as well as our questionnaire. Um, no one is allowed to come up the boat. Once those documents are completed, they are to return the questionnaire back to the dog master. Um, the series of questions that's on there, if there's any that's um, answered in the in the positive, then the dog master would in turn call immigration, who would review the form, and if they have some concerns, then they would then call the medical team, the doctor and the nurse. The carriers have been really cooperating. Valeria actually um, has the best protocol I've seen so far, where what they've been doing is they produce their own health care questions, which was similar to ours, but we allowed them to use their protocol. So what they currently do, if you are in Fort Lauderdale wanting to come to Bimini, you first have to complete the health care questionnaire, and then they also take your temperature before boarding. If you do have a temperature, they will not allow you to board. 
and um, Virgin Cruises, who was scheduled to come here April 3rd, um, is establishing the same protocol, but of course they have to leave their um, ship coming aug um, August 2020. Well, Administrator Pinder says the two areas have been identified to be used as quarantine centers if the need arises, one in North Bimini and the other in South Bimini. She says while residents in Bimini are preparing, they are not panicking. Pinder also noted that Resorts World has donated thermometers for all of the ports of the entry, ports of entry in Bimini. I spoke to um, the two major food stores here on the island, and they said persons are buying items like canned goods, um, medicines, um, and the um, the tourists are currently on in, on the island. Um, one of the stores that they they stand up, you know, increase with them buying buying items as well. So um, I think they're taking it serious, but you know, still it's still a wait and see game. I mean, things aren't flying off the shelves as yet, um, but yeah, you do see. I'm taking it serious, but not serious, serious. What about social distancing on Bimini? Do, ha have you had to cancel any public gatherings or any public meetings or functions? Okay, we were actually in the process of organizing and planning um, the homecoming, which is scheduled for April 10th um, to the 12th. And so we just um, posted a, a public notice um, you know, letting the residents know that. So um, you probably will see that coming across on um, because we did have our flyer out there and so it will be postponed. I just would encourage persons to, you know, um, take heed to what has been said, you know, especially with the um, the sanitizing, the hand washing and, and the proper way to cough. You know, I just feel everyone should take heed to that. Um, we tend to take things lightly, but it's, you know, it's seriously enough for them to warrant um, the social distancing. So everyone should really take it. And coming up, the coronavirus and the church. Tonight, we will get a biblical perspective. Stay with us.